All right, folks, how are we doing? It's Shabash. Welcome back to the channel. It's Orna again. And today we are doing a guide on joining your first kingdom in Orna. Now, the first, the very first thing to know is you can only join a kingdom within the same faction that you've chosen. And if you haven't chosen a faction yet, then you have to choose a faction, otherwise you can't really join a kingdom. So you can see to join a kingdom, we'll just get started straight away, is uh, the kingdom menu at the bottom left here that you can see from the world map. So tap on that. And you've got two options you can create a kingdom but you need to be level 150 and you can join a kingdom you need to be at least level 25 and i do kind of recommend not joining a kingdom until you're at least tier 3 uh, tier 4 or 5 you know a lot of people they get up to level 100 120 and they don't even know there's a kingdom function in the game yet so those are the typical uh, levels you can join you know you can join level 25 if you're playing with your mates or whatever but you know what i would say is don't create a kingdom unless you know uh, what you're doing a little bit at least tr go in a kingdom first and then you know see how it works because it is an investment to create a kingdom and anyway there's basically two decent ways to find a good kingdom to join the first one uh, we'll go through now is by searching in the actual uh, search bar in the game also if you're a little bit more active and you have discord you can check the main or in a discord there are kingdom recruitment channels there for each dedicated faction so you can go on there and uh, and check typically those will be a little bit more active and they will obviously require you to have discord to, to find them but there's plenty of good kingdoms on discord now okay so you can see we're in earthen legion and immediately uh, we can only see earthen kingdoms coming up and the first thing we're going to do is actually we're going to change the sort function to we're going to go by rank and i'll explain why in a second but when you first see uh, these kingdoms come up and it's showing and it's sorting by default the problem is the issue is these will show newly created kingdoms with only one or two members you can see uh, all of these have one member out of 50 one member out of 50 and going down there's two or three members now to unlock a lot of kingdom functions you need a minimum of six people in the kingdom itself so you, these people they're not even going to have uh, a lot of raids set up at all really because they're not really going to have any decent income source so you know it's always better to sort by rank and the reason we sort by rank is that this is a decent indication of kingdom activity regardless of the levels of people in the kingdom we're not looking for the top uh, die hard all 250 member kingdoms you know uh, that comes after when we're just starting out we just want a little bit of kingdom activity you know we want to make sure there's a few of the early raids up so we can uh, get involved with them and you can see if we just check the first the first kingdom here scream of terror they will have a normally a welcome message you can read that some of them if they have you know a discord as a requirement they will tell you the information we're looking at is uh, basically minimum player level Sometimes that will be set uh, a lot higher than you, but you know, often kings will say, if you are an active player, we will take uh, people who are less than the required level. But uh, for the sake of this, we'll just try and find the kingdom which is taking players of our level. And here we go again, you know, the king this kingdom is uh, taking people over level 200, so that doesn't really apply to us. And the reason, again, we sort by rank is that the ranking system takes into account recent activity over the last 30 days for each kingdom. That's uh, wars, kingdom gauntlets, and raids. So obviously we want to join a kingdom which is doing a decent amount of raids. So we're just going to go here. Um, you can see what they, they will say. We have all the raids. We have wars. We have discord. We have dragons and stuff. What more could you want? Uh, temple manic on Saturdays. We'll talk about temples later on. Minimum player level, uh, fairly high. Another thing to bear in mind is if you have a specific language in mind, though, there's plenty of kingdoms. Uh, example, speaking German, Brazilian, Portuguese, Italian, whatever. Uh, so that is one option. Uh, Russian kingdom here. And you can see all of these kingdoms, they have a decent amount of members, you know, all in uh, double figures. A lot of them, at least 20, 30, 40 uh, kingdom members, which is a decent sign to check for activity. Uh, here we go, level 150. So... There is a couple of pages, well there's lots of pages, but you know, it might be difficult to find a decent kingdom on the first page around level 100. You can see here's a kingdom here, uh, based in North America, minimum player level 100, so that's actually a little bit above us. Let's go on the next page, uh, Russian order, potato farm, we grow the best potatoes in Orna, minimum player level 25, but you can see they've got 49 members out of 50, and they're still fairly decent, decently ranked. Um, the power, that is the cumulative total of every member's player level. And the influence is the cumulative total of every player's reputation, how many areas they control. But you know, who doesn't like, who doesn't like tatties, right? Let's, let's join. 
and then it takes you to the Kingdom Hall and you have a message here and uh, <laughs> these guys like potatoes obviously so yeah this seems like a, a decent a good fun kingdom and uh, wow okay next thing we're gonna check is uh, the bank what kind of uh, what kind of bank do they have you know uh, if you see up here and they have zero orange zero florins and like 1k gold leave that kingdom I'm, I'm sorry unless you're playing with your mates leave that kingdom because you're not really there's almost no point in you being in that kingdom if you join and they've got you know five figure amount of gold six figure orange that's absolutely brilliant uh, florins we're not too worried about florins it is a nice bonus on top and um, but you know these guys seem pretty chill uh, what we'll do is check the raids what the, what are they running what raids are active you see Draken is the first raid, you know, it's a tier 3 raid, so that's good. Uh, Fulmor is not up right now, but uh, Kerberos, that is the event raid, you see it says event, so that is a monthly raid. If you see that they've got monthly raids going, that's a pretty decent indication that they're, they're playing regularly, especially at the moment. Star Lord, that's a very important raid that we want. Titan, also very important. Uh, Baylor Elite, also very important. I'm going to show you a really nice trick later on uh, into how we can make the most out of these higher tier raids, even though we can't get gear from them. You can get nice items from these higher tier raids and you know okay they've got all the way up to Apollyon not got Morgan unlocked yet but you know if they've got at least this uh, tier 7 Baylor Elite raid unlocked uh, that means it's a, it's a fairly well established kingdom you can see the requirements for this raid kingdom level 4 and kingdom level is dictated by how many wins how many war wins the kingdom has and um, so yeah you're looking uh, looking for a good amount of bank a decent amount of uh, of raids up that's absolutely perfect this this place seems pretty decent um you have the chat the kingdom chat function down here now this is a new a new chat window opened uh, i hope there's nothing that we can't show here um okay and these guys are speaking 17th of february 2021 that is the date today 17th of february so you know uh yesterday actually but uh, there is some chat down there so yeah these guys seems like a, a fairly decent place and the biggest benefit we're going to get out of joining a kingdom uh, is the access to the kingdom raids. They drop really good gear for our level, lots of decent items like arena tokens, gauntlet keys as well, also potions that we can use to upgrade our stats, that kind of thing. So if you're not fully aware of uh, how the kingdom gets gold, how they get orange, etc. Uh, well, the first thing, let's look at kingdom gold. That's very important because you use kingdom gold to start the kingdom wars and kingdom gauntlets. Now. How do we get kingdom gold? Well, any kingdom member in a kingdom, when they kill monsters or bosses out in the wild, or indeed in dungeons, you will start seeing uh, you get a little bit of kingdom gold. There we go. We get 11 kingdom gold from every mob or every boss that you kill in the world or in dungeons. And that is a set amount. Uh, you know, there's a tiny range for each monster, but that act, this amount actually cannot uh, be increased by uh, boosters like the lucky coin doesn't actually increase the amount so kingdom gold for early and newly made kingdom is actually uh, one of the hardest things to generate especially at lower levels because you're killing lower level mobs which drop lower amounts of kingdom gold but seeing 13 million kingdom gold uh, is a pretty really good indication that this kingdom is fairly well established they have a decent amount of active players playing the game so that's great so that's how you get kingdom gold and you know all of the members contribute to that whenever they're killing mobs out in the wild or in dungeons. Then, Kingdom Gold is used to start Kingdom Wars and Kingdom Gauntlets. And winning wars, winning your gauntlets, that brings you Kingdom Orns. And the Kingdom Orns is what is used to start raids. You see, when you go into the raids, you have the, the bank up here. And uh, if you are an officer, oh no, you, you see here, FOMO costs 1,000 Orns to start. Um, let's see what other raids are not up. I think everything else is up. Okay, tier 10 Morgan raid costs over 10,000 more. So well, that's, a, that's a higher tier raid. We're not worried about that at uh, level 100. So when you join a kingdom, you can immediately be involved in the, the kingdom gauntlet and the, and the wars. Uh, let's talk about wars. That's very important. We, we seem to not be doing too well here. But uh, basically, wars, you see there's a timer. Uh, wars typically last at least up to 24 hours. Well, as a maximum, up to 24 hours. And it's a basically a PvP fight. Uh, characters in each kingdom are matched relatively uh, to their level and also their uh, position in their own roster. So you won't always get a fair matchup. Um, it depends on if your kingdom is on a winning streak. Over the last couple of wars, you're likely going to get a tougher kingdom. But that's the way it goes. And 
I'm sure if you've seen a few of my other videos, uh, I have shown uh, people getting kingdoms getting a decent amount of orns for winning, and you get roughly um, between two, two and a half thousand orns per fight. That's only if you win the actual war. If you lose or if you tie, you only get a handful of orns, kingdom orns. So you have an attack, you have a defense as well. You can go down and check if you won the defense. Uh, it seems like we're in a, a fairly unwinnable position here, which is a shame. And it's winning wars, which upgrades your kingdom level. So you can see here 67 victories. Every five victories gets your kingdom up a level. And you do need to level up your kingdom in order to unlock higher tier raids. Now let's look at the kingdom gauntlet. This works very similarly to a normal gauntlet, except when you start it, it costs gold to start, it costs kingdom gold to start, and it costs kingdom gold uh, depending on the amount of people in your kingdom. So the more members you have in the kingdom, the more gold it's going to cost to start kingdom gauntlets. Same goes for the kingdom war as well. And these uh, fights basically matches characters up against monsters and even bosses in their own tier. So a tier 3 player is not going to get matched up to a tier 4 mob. It will get matched to a tier 3 mob like this guy here, Nerg, level 86. Uh, tier... <laughs> this guy I think is out leveled uh, this this tier 3 mob while he's been in the gauntlet. But you see normally, um, okay, for example, Socrates, 5th Sage of Terra, level 100, so tier 5, going up against a tier 5 mob there. And then when everybody has won their fight, you will gain a few thousand Kingdom Orns. So that's another way to get Kingdom Orns and you are allowed three losses in a gauntlet. Otherwise, if you lose a gauntlet, if there are three losses, uh, you don't get any orange, you need to restart the, the gauntlet. And if you're an officer in your kingdom, you can actually shuffle uh, fights out every 20 minutes. So uh, you can get berserk mobs in here. So there are certainly uh, pretty infamous berserk mobs in kingdom gauntlets, which are known to, to cause uh, some destruction uh, to low level players and even high level players in kingdom gauntlets itself. So when you're called upon, you will get a notification if you have notifications on for kingdom stuff to, to do your kingdom gauntlet. For a lot of the casual kingdoms, they're not going to rush you off your feet to do your fight. Uh, if you do see that you have a monster here down in the bottom left, that's usually, you can actually tap on that and that will take you to your kingdom gauntlet fight. Just do it as soon as you can. And uh, war fight as well. Remember, wars only last 24 hours at a maximum, so try and log on at least once a day if you have been matched in the kingdom war. Uh, not everybody is matched in kingdom wars. And after this, uh, fight goes. We will see you for the next fight. We will we'll talk about Kingdom Wars uh, when we get involved in them. So you use Kingdom Gold to start wars and to start gauntlets and then winning wars, winning gauntlets gets you Kingdom Orns and you use Kingdom Orns to start raids. Now as we said uh, there is a 24 hour cooldown on joining a kingdom before you can start raiding. Uh, you get this uh, pop up here saying you must pledge 24 hours to this kingdom before participating in raids. And that's the stop. Uh, big mean bullies joining random kingdoms and uh, cleaning up their raids without uh, offering any kind of support to the kingdom itself. So uh, that's why it's in place. So, so as we level up on uh, this character, I will be doing some guides on how to uh, try and damage, do as much damage as possible to the raid bosses. What I will say though, as a kind of warning, try not to go overboard on uh, the lower tier raid bosses, especially if they're below your tier. Uh, for example, uh, Dracon and former they're pretty notorious for getting taken apart by by higher level players you know mid-tier players you can see it's a tier 3 raid so it's not dropping anything better it's not dropping tier 4 or 5 items at all especially the gear it's not dropping the gear it drops is tier 3 so it's kind of scaled to tier 3 players uh, it does drop other useful things which we'll come on and talk about later on in the video uh, damage limits as well 100% damage limits that means you can go in and do up to that limit if your character is able to and that's normally set by the officers in the kingdom they can go and change that limit depending on the raid it seems like in this kingdom everybody is a 100% damage limit okay so let's talk about uh, kingdom quests and research then kingdom quests are like any other kind of random quest that you find like daily quests or quests from inns and you can see uh, this now this is a tier 2 quest you have to defeat a certain amount of monsters also recently it shows when people have accepted that quest so this was accepted a week ago Jim Killer has uh, seven more skeleton warriors to kill him to complete that quest when you accept and complete a kingdom quest it does count towards your achievement for the quest seeker achievement which is nice and as a reward for completing kingdom quests the kingdom gains florins and florins are used in kingdom research which is right here 
And a couple of nice things immediately that florins can be used for is uh, metallurgy, which actually gives gold and orange to members of its kingdom members. And they're actually the ratio is actually the same. Uh, there is a little bit more for greater metallurgy, but it does take five days. But um, if you join a kingdom and you see they are researching these two, orange are, are pretty useful early on, right? So that's always a nice thing. And you can also use Florence to research things like hexes which you use in wars, blessings which you use in wars as well, and then temple as well can be used. Uh, this acts like a experience boost or an orn gain boost for a 24 hour period, but you can see they do cost a hefty amount of florins. So a lot of the higher, uh, more active kingdoms which have been established for a long time, they run temples quite regularly and they will use that to attract uh, more higher level players. But it's not something we worry too much about. Uh, if we're just casually playing uh, through the early and mid game. So let's just say hi here. Uh, so I've just gone in and uh, said hello, see what they say. Uh, I don't really want to bother with the Discord on this kingdom in particular, but you know, if they ask me to join the Discord, I, I will do so. You know, a lot of the more active kingdoms will make Discord a requirement. On the other hand, there are, again, a lot of uh, casual kingdoms which are super chilled and they just want to play the game. They're not worried about being the number one ranked kingdom in Orna. So there really is kingdoms out there for every kind of player style, player activity. And it might take you a little bit of time to find one that fits you. All right, so it's been at least 24 hours. We're allowed to raid for our kingdom now. And we are also included in the current war fight. You can tell if you're in the war fight uh, with these the cross swords down in the bottom left here and you can click on that to go immediately to your war fight and wars last up to 24 hours uh, so try and complete your fight within that time period you only have one one fight to do and uh, you know so as long as you log in at least once a day you'll be able to uh, be able to complete that and so our matchup is you normally you're matched up against somebody uh, roughly around the same level as yourself uh, so we are up against another tier 4 character here I'm just going to put on another skill which I want to, to use just in case. Uh, I'm not going to actually use Trika in my PvP loader. I'm going to use uh, take Double Edge just in case they have high defense. But what I'm probably going to do is use Warcry uh, and then just uh, try cut and Volley as much as possible. And uh, yeah, we'll do our best. You see it's actually quite a, quite, a, quite a close fight here. 24 wins on our side, 26 wins on our opponent's side. Uh, you can check how your opponents do by clicking on defense down here so let's go down we should be at the bottom and uh, oh we actually won our warfight we, we managed to take them down so um that puts us in good stead if we can win this fight on the uh, on our offense and uh, we might be able to get our our kingdom a win so i'm going to use tricot first see how much damage we do um i'm wondering basically i'm wondering whether or not to bother with warcry I'm, I'm going to use warcry actually and um, I'm gonna wait until his war turns run out and then I'm gonna use tricot basically I've got two turns of tricot now and uh, you see how good the wisp the wisp pet is uh, for them so yeah let's use volley again our, our attack is high enough that we can damage them with volley but this is gonna be a really close fight hopefully one more hit and uh, we should be able to take them down so yeah, mana is an issue on uh, when you're attacking. Remember, the, the defensive AI doesn't actually have any mana. They have unlimited mana. So in the early game, it's uh, it's quite easy for the AI to, to get some wins because we have low mana and we run out of mana fairly easily. You, you, of course, can't use any potions. So we managed to get another win for our kingdom. I'm not sure if we have any guys left to attack. Okay, one, two, three... Oh, actually, a lot of our guys uh, haven't bothered to attack yet, so so that's a shame. Hopefully, a few of them will, will walk in within 20, 20 minutes or so and, uh, and be able to attack. Um, so so that's the war fights, and uh, as I said, typically wars will last up to a maximum of 24 hours. If everybody on each side does their war fight, fights can end earlier. Wars can end uh, before 24 hours is up, and then you can just go straight into the next one. So now let's talk about uh, raiding, seeing as we're here in the kingdom menu. We'll see what uh, what raids are up. So the, the low tier raids aren't actually up at the moment. Uh, normally you'll be able to ask uh, officers to get those raids up. 
and so the higher raids are up. So uh, higher raids are really good for low level players uh, for one main reason and that is gauntlet keys and other different items they can actually drop for us. We cannot get gear from raids above our tier but we can get uh, like subsidiary items to drop like the keys, arena tokens, that sort of thing. So there's kind of two ways you can try and deal damage. Basically as long as you deal more than zero damage to a raid boss and um, that puts you in the drop pool. So you see there's a guy down here, no brainer. He's done, he's managed to do two damage uh, and that's more than enough to actually get him in the drop loot pool to get some items down. And uh, two damage, we're actually going to use the exact same te technique uh, that he managed to use. Uh, it's actually a little bit of a, of a cheeky technique. All you're going to do is uh, equip two items, but they have to be uh, dual wielding. We're going to dual wield two items and they can be literally any items. In fact, I'm not even going to put a, a fallen warrior sword. I'm going to put my two worst weapons on. So let's find something with, what have we got here? Like. 8 attack, broken dagger, literally a tier 1 item, don't even begin the game with that. And so, okay, so how to dual wield, you go in your offhand slot and you tap on dual wielding at the top. And that allows you to wear two weapons rather than a shield or another offhand. And basically dual wielding, it effectively ha almost pretty much halves uh, the basic stats. And I just want to make sure, yeah. Not quite halves, I think you get 55% of uh, each value of each weapon uh, so look at that we've got two broken daggers on i'm not even going to bother putting any other gear on and remember this is specifically on how to do damage to higher tier raid bosses this is uh, basically a tier 7 raid boss and um, if we just go in and use tri cut we're not going to be able to attack or do any damage to him so we've got our our double daggers equipped and then you just go in and you and you click the attack button and you do two damage each hit managed to put in one tick of damage. So you go in into the next boss, uh, attack again. All right, if you miss, that's unfortunate. Can't really handle that, but we got a crit and uh, we got two damage in. Let's get another four damage. Um, to be honest, you don't need to bother going anything higher than two damage because um, effectively it's not going to make any difference going from two damage to four damage. So let's go through all the raids and uh, yeah pop two damage in so that means we're now in the we're going to get a little bit of drops uh, when this boss eventually uh, gets taken down uh, so hopefully i can get some reward screens for you it would have been nice to get some damage on the other uh, other raids but here's a here's a tier 8 kerberos raid let's do another two damage on that and okay so in a few hours time when these go down and i'll let you know and give you a clear reason why you want to do this early on and that's going to be really great to get some uh, some extra items for us. Uh, Titan, Baylory and King Arthas, they all drop gauntlet keys. That's why you want to go in and uh, do a little bit of damage on those. And what I also recommend you do is if you go in your options and go to notifications, you can turn on kingdom notifications. I've just got all of these on. So you get notifications for uh, raids which are starting or ending, uh, war notifications, if you are required to fight in the war and uh, got the notifications as well. So I've just gone in and put them on so I, I, I know not to not to forget. So you see this Baylor Elite reward screen now. Uh, two keys, that was just from doing two damage. If you can get those keys uh, coming in that way from maybe once or twice a day from Kingdom Raids, that's an absolute bonus. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you want any more information on Kingdoms. Uh, we will do separate guides for the raid bosses in the future. But for the moment, thanks for watching. I'm Shabash, and we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.